Hey guys, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. It is late at night as I am filming this, but I just have had it on my mind. Um, the prompt for day 16 of International Zine Month. I am a little behind, as everybody probably knows, and as nobody probably cares. So, <laughs> we'll just get on with it. The prompt for today is make a list of reasons you love zines and share your list with others. So, I kept trying to think of creating a more organized, you know, bullet point list, making sure that I'm covering everything and talking about all that. And frankly, um, I feel like I've given that speech quite a few times, especially recently. Um, as I've been working on the zine library at the Watertown Free Public Library for my job, and as I've sort of been extolling the virtues of zines, I feel like I have a standard script that I tend to go through when it talks about why, uh, why I like zines. And although they're all good reasons, I feel like they are tailored a little more towards why should one like zines, you know, where I'm trying to appeal to somebody else instead of really talking about why I like them and trying to capture how much zines mean to me. So instead what I'm going to do, instead of trying to give a bullet point list that, you know, I use many times <laughs> throughout my life, I'm just going to wax poetic, uh, and, and ramble on a little bit about why I like zines. I also think it'll be a nice break for my midpoint between these videos. And, um, it's just late at night and it's just one of those things that, <laughs> you know, when you're up, you're up late and then you just start talking all delirious and, um, it doesn't make any sense to anybody but you. Well, <laughs> I guess that's what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do it on film. <laughs> so let me just start a little by saying that, honestly, I haven't been seriously involved in zines for very long. I don't know if one can ever be seriously involved in zines, because I think that the nature of zines are inherently not serious things. But, you know, I haven't really done much with zines for all that long compared to many veteran zinesters who have been doing this since the fucking 1960s or 1980s or a lot of people got into it in the 1990s if that's when they were a teenager. I'm a little younger than all that so I missed that boat. <laughs> and um, also I just had, you know, I... I mentioned this in my zine vlog, which was like the very first video that I ever made on this channel, and so if you haven't seen it, I don't blame you. <laughs> but basically, I started making what, in hindsight, is pretty obviously a zine um, back when I was in middle school, and that was the first thing that I actually published and photocopied that was definitely a zine. And that was a zine called uh, The Paper Peoples, and it was basically like a newspaper. It was like a school newspaper, right? But <laughs> basically the name school newspaper was just a front so that we could use the copy machine because we didn't talk about the school at all. It had nothing to do with the school. We didn't talk about sports events. We didn't cover any school news that was happening. No, it was a whole bunch of student submissions, student artwork, student um, short stories, games, random articles, movie reviews. It was just like a whole bunch of random stuff that we felt like throwing in there. And it was so incredibly fun and rewarding. And it still remains one of my most treasured times in my life <laughs> were times when I was working on that newspaper slash zine. And then I basically, when I had to move high schools, I didn't have to, I guess, but I did move high schools. Um, I ended up trying to join the newspaper there with the idea that it probably was going to be a little bit more serious and official just because it was that sort of school, but it, 
you know, I thought it would still be fun, and it was not fun, and it was awful, and there were these super bossy, pretentious editors that were clearly doing this so that they could have it on their college application thing and cared way too much about the final outcome of it, you know, trying to make it look professional, despite the fact that, of course, among the student body, everyone was joking, it's like, nobody reads this. And the thing is, people also made those jokes about the paper people. <laughs> people hated that we photocopied it and we left it everywhere. And we actually had someone making a rival newspaper, newsletter, basically like a rival zine that was specifically calling us out and complaining about us, which we had some fun with that. But basically the whole point is that, you know, I figured that people are going to not like what you do no matter what. And especially at this age, when they're all a bunch of grumpy, annoying high schoolers, you know, not... <laughs> people, people, you know, you shouldn't try to make something that everybody else is going to like, because people are going to hate it anyway, so you might as well make something fun, and you might as well, you might as well make something that you like doing. Um, obviously that sort of thing didn't fly at, you know, that, at a, uh, it was a very normal high school, whereas my, my middle school that I had been doing the paper people's at was very, um, alternative. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Um, so anyway, I guess that's sort of where my zine, um, life took a bit of a hiatus was when I was in high school. I also had a whole bunch of family shit going on. Um, and so basically I wasn't making zines. I wasn't reading zines. I just was completely oblivious to zines beyond the fact that I knew they existed for many, you know, several years until I was in my junior year in college. I hesitate to call it my junior year because I had such a fragmented thing that I don't mean to suggest that I had been in college for three years. I mean, I had been in college for like five something years. I don't know. It's all a big mess, but whatever. I was in college. I was what one would call a junior. <laughs> and um, I was in this class that was about the history of the city and like uh, of cities period <laughs> um, and it was really interesting and our final project was basically about take talking about a modern issue that was in a city in california which is where i went to school um and so what what my group ended up doing was talking about the sacramento music scene and basically how rising rents in Sacramento were pushing out what was once a very thriving alternative music scene, especially punk music. And this was all sort of spearheaded by uh, my two other group members, like the, the concept behind it was spearheaded by them because they had grown up in Sacramento and so they sort of saw this happening firsthand. And when I started doing like my what what I ended up doing a lot of for that was this historical research part and through doing that I was sort of reminded of zines and and discovered a whole lot of zines and it sort of rekindled this idea of like oh yeah zines <laughs> um as a side note there's this comic that I read on DeviantArt and I will try to find it so that I can link it below but basically, it was just a three-panel comic. First panel has someone in bed, clearly having a nightmare, shaking and sweating. Second panel has them waking up suddenly like, oh my god, waking up from a nightmare. Third panel has them saying, oh yeah, Kinko's. And then they go back to sleep, so I guess it's four panels. <laughs> and that was basically from this you know, they they created a whole bunch of zines and 
needed to photocopy stuff all the time and so sometimes they would wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat feeling like they had forgotten to copy something or knowing that they had a brilliant idea that would never be able to be out there and then they remembered that there was a 24-hour Kinko's nearby and so it soothed all of their worries knowing that at any time they could just go and photocopy <laughs> some stuff. Um, so I, I, <laughs> I guess it sort of felt like that. It felt like I was, I was sort of creatively blocked. I was creatively stressed. I'd done a whole bunch of creative stuff always. And I just felt like I never found my niche. I never found my people. I didn't have a community. I didn't have any friends. I didn't make anything that I was really happy with. And all of that, it felt like I had been in this cold sweat and then being reminded, oh yeah, zines just kind of alleviated so many worries for me in this weird way because, um, you know, at the time I wouldn't really have remembered or I, I wouldn't have thought of it this way, but now I'm realizing that um, I just work really well with zines for a lot of reasons and they are so creatively freeing to me for a lot of reasons. One, and perhaps the one of the foremost things, is that um, there is so much freedom for what a zine can look like on the inside. So obviously there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of freedom on what a zine can look like on the outside too, but I'm specifically feeling like, okay, you have this, you have paper and it can include handwritten stuff. It can include illustrations, it can include collage, it can include um, basically anything that you can stick in there and anything that can photocopy. Um, and you know, there's also digital zines, which is a whole other thing that can include stuff that you can't photocopy, but you know, just the, the sort of traditional, um, you know, physical zines, you can, you can include anything that you want in there. Um, and it's not beholden to particular restrictions of form. So for example, I played around with doing a web comic for a while. And I do really like comics and I really like making comics. Um, the thing about the webcomic is there were so many times where I felt constricted and I didn't even realize it at the time, but I felt constricted by the very nature of the medium where, you know, if I had a moment where I'm like, this would make more sense if I just wrote the entire thing out instead of trying to show what happened or trying to draw it, like, it just makes more sense written. Then it's like, there's all these considerations about, well, it's a comic, and by nature, a comic, you know, the at least the style that I was doing, I was so worried about it be, being consistent, like, um, consistency between pages, and, con and you know, when you're reading a, a comic, you're not going to be reading it, see like regular comic pages with illustrations and panels and whatever, and then get to one page that's basically just a big narrative chunk. It just doesn't make, it doesn't fit in with that. And um, sort of the same thing of if there were moments where I wanted to draw a sequence that was in a more loose thing, so not really a strict illustration, and not really explaining anything, but just, um, you know, like for the sake of character development, just including basically a big page of sketches and things. Um, because I feel like sketches can be a lot looser and a lot more fluid and you can say a lot of things about the character that you wouldn't be able to say if you had to fit it within a narrative sense. You know what I mean? Maybe. <laughs> if you don't, that's cool. But basically, the whole point is, um, in a comic, I love I love comics and I love them as a medium. But those things are not. If if you're gonna have a comic that does that sort of thing, it is going to be a very different comic, and it's going to be very unexpected. And there are ways that you can use that sort of deviation from the normal. Se sequence of panels and stuff 
in a way that is intentional for the story. Like, if you were to do a dream sequence or something, that would be a great opportunity in a comic to do a whole bunch of scribbly, sketchy things without narrative. Um, or if you were going to replace it with a big block of text, I feel like you you could do that and have it mean something. But I didn't want it to mean something. It was just like, this is how I want to express the story at this point. This is what I want to do. And it felt like I wasn't able to do that because it wouldn't fit in with the rest of it. That was a very long way of me saying that um, many other forms for me, I did not like the constrictions of them. And, you know, comics is just one example. I didn't like the constrictions of um, most forms of creative writing. Like, I've done novels and short stories and, you know, I've done NaNoWriMo a million times. I mean, I've I've actually worked at NaNoWriMo. <laughs> Some fun trivia about me. Um, I was, I did customer service slash tech support kind of thing <laughs> over there for a while. So, you know, if you ever wrote into the customer service, I was probably the one who answered you. <laughs> anyway, um, these, these other forms, they just never quite clicked with me. And I didn't really know why. And I would start getting in my head about being a bad artist or, you know, even if I knew intellectually, it's like, well, there's no such thing as a bad artist, really. And I'm not, there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. It just didn't feel right. And it didn't feel like I was expressing things the way that I wanted to. And then come zines. <laughs> and the first zine that I made um, to kind of get back into it was actually a mini zine for the uh, project on Punk Spaces, where basically we, we had this idea that it would be really cool to do a little handout for the class about the music scene and about why it's in danger and like some some cool bands local to Sacramento and some possibilities for how um, how the problem of them being pushed out could be fixed and some other resources. And basically, it was just like a little mini zine that accompanied our presentation. Um, and I really, really enjoyed working on that uh, for a lot of reasons. One, the mini zine format was really nice to be able to have these nice little chunks that as soon as they were completed, it was like, oh, that's great. You know, it's pretty easy to finish a single page of a mini zine. And then you get this nice satisfaction, ah, completeness feeling. And, you, you know, it's really motivating to move on. And also, it just felt so um, concise and so complete. And that was really nice. And what I really, but what I really liked about it was being able to play with the images a lot more than I had been able to do in comics and I felt like I'd been able to do in other forms of art, you know, and I'd done painting and I'd done all illustration and a bunch of other stuff. I felt like I was able to play with images in this one in a way that I um, hadn't felt able to do in these other mediums where, like, I could... Um, take photographs and distort the crap out of them. And <laughs> that's cool. And that's part of it. And that's like, yeah, this is what is cool in this medium. <laughs> and I could uh, do some drawings or I could just draw straight on top of them to highlight certain parts where it's like, okay, I want to draw a couple little stars in there because I really like this particular person's expression and it looks like they have stars in their eyes. I'll just draw some stars in their eyes straight on top. And that's cool. And that's part of it. Um, and just this, this total freedom that came from, uh, from this medium in, you know, and this is all for school too. This is a school project that it's not super free in the sense that we had a whole bunch of restrictions for the school project and we had things that we had to talk about and we had things that we knew we wanted to talk about in this zine. So it, this wasn't even like a per zine or something that I just wanted to do for fun. 
and feeling that liberated for a school project was nuts. And then getting, you know, it took me a little while after that to sort of get moving on making my own zines after that. But I felt like it opened up a door and, or, or just shone a light on something that I had kind of ignored for a long time of like, hey, you like this and you like how open this is, you like how free it is, and you can really express yourself in this way, in a way that, you know, it is. it has been difficult for you to express yourself in all these other mediums for a very long time. So that, you know, that sort of started things and I had like this slow build up and suddenly <laughs> here I am doing a zine YouTube with like a dozen zines under my belt now in the last 12, 12 is a dozen, it's not what I mean, in the last like two years-ish. Um, I am working at a zine library. <laughs> I'm working at a public library developing a zine collection which just kind of came out of the blue and and I sort of joked when people asked me what I wanted to do in library school. I was sort of joking about like, man, it'd be really cool to work at a zine library, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that one because, you know, trying to make a living off of being a zine librarian is pretty hard. Like when I say dream job, that's like, you know, crazy dream job, dream job. And then here it is. And I get to work in this teen department and I have been working on developing this zine library for a few months now. And I am just having the time of my life and I'm sitting at work and I'm reading these zines and I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm getting paid for this. Someone is paying me to catalog zines, to print and fold zines for the zine catalog, to make handouts about social justice zines. It's like, you know, I don't mean this as a brag by any means. I just mean, you know, I just mean all this to say how fulfilling it has been to feel like I have a medium to express myself with that I really, I, I'm not getting tired of. And I don't know that I could ever get tired with it because it's so open in a way that if I do get tired with one sort of zine or one style of zine making or whatever, just make it, you just go to something else. You move another, you make another one and it can still count as a zine. So I guess, I guess that that's sort of all to say how what I love about zines is their openness and their, um, there's no restrictions and there's no rules on what counts as a zine and all of those things that I would give in my bullet point presentation about why I love zines and why you should too. Um, but it's a lot more than just that, you know, it's a lot more than just the bullet point. It's this artistic medium that really cracked me open and it sort of took me back to this time in my life that I really enjoyed and it has opened up so many creative avenues for me and all of this came at a time in my life when I was really just on the cusp of recovery from a lot of stuff and this spurred that and it just feels like it's been there with me as I've sort of blossomed <laughs> or whatever into this happier, more well-adjusted person. So, you know, I, I, it's deeper than just the bullet point. You know what I mean? I also really love reading zines. I love trading zines. I really love how zine culture is... I, I love how zine culture is on the whole, about how it is very warm and accepting and encouraging 
for everybody to make a zine. There was um, Holly Cassio. I might be getting the name wrong, but basically a zine librarian in the UK. Um, I was at the zine workshop thing that they were hosting, and there was this um, page that they had made for um, zine workshops and zine events and things, and it basically said it was sort of a play off of this old here are three chords, now form a band. And this said, you know, here's a piece of paper, here's a glue stick, here's some scissors, now make a zine. And it was really done as this call to action of like, do it, make a zine, because it is for everybody and the world needs to hear your voice. You know, the fact that that is so ingrained into zine culture, you know, that's one reason I really loved working at NaNoWriMo, actually, since I mentioned it, is that the the whole point of NaNoWriMo is that your story matters and the world needs to hear your story and you need to just get it out there and the the purpose of the whole event and the whole creative challenge, I guess, is is to encourage you to tell your story and actually get it out there. And that is wonderful. The the thing about zines is it feels like it's not just one organization that is trying to spread that message. It is the entire core of zinedom, <laughs> you know? Um, and it's so, it's so built in this idea that of, of for fun, not profit and for sharing the love and for trading and bartering and for putting yourself out there and not really expecting anything in return or at least not not expecting much in return um you know i feel like it's it's so refreshing i guess and it's so empowering and so liberating to be part of something that really has never been about profit and by nature will never be about profit and pretty much can never be about profit because even the even when you get some some sections of the of the zine community that are supposed to be more about profit like Basically, there's this one place, I've sort of been itching to complain about this for a while, so I'll try to keep it short, but basically, I found this thing, it was like a monthly zine subscription, and they had specifically made a big deal about tailoring their zines to only the best of the best from up-and-coming young LA artists, and a whole bunch of bullshit like that, and they literally said on their website, like, there's a lot of weak sauce zines out there, and we filter them out for you, like... Jesus fucking Christ, you know what I mean? Oh my god. Um okay, so you can see what how I could how I could go off about that. <laughs> um but the thing is, those sort of zine things, any attempt at making zines mainstream in the sense of making them for profit and making them about um quality or like perfection or you know, basically anything that's about creating zines for the sake of selling them or or so that they can sell and having the creation be designed in such a way that you are trying to make it sell as opposed to creating something that comes from your soul. <laughs> that sounds kind of pretentious, but you know, as opposed to just creating something that you want. Um, there are always going to be zinesters and there's always going to be a zine community that is doing zines from the heart, doing zines subversively, doing zines without the um, intention for profit. And that that is always going to be the dominant su subsect of zines because that's kind of what they were based on and that's kind of, it's so ingrained in the culture that if you if you don't have that, if you, if you take away the subversive parts and if you take away the, um, you know, not-for-profit parts, then it sort of ceases to become a zine. Um, 
I feel like I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but just to sum all that up, just this idea that the zine community is encouraging because it is specifically anti-profit or like not for profit as sort of a concept and as an art form, it is not for profit. That is part of what makes the zine community so special to me and what makes me feel so able to participate in it and so willing to participate in it and just so encouraged and and supported I guess by the zine community um yeah so there's a lot of other things that I could go on about why I love zines I think that maybe the best way to sum it up is that admittedly I you know it's a little difficult putting out videos for once a day <laughs> and I knew it would be going in uh, you know being a NaNoWriMo veteran I am no stranger to monthly challenges <laughs> and their difficulties and the pr the problems that they bring up so you know being halfway or technically two-thirds of the way through now at the time that I'm recording this um halfway through the month two-thirds of the way through the month like I start feeling like okay I really don't want to make this video or or it starts to feel more like an obligation or it starts to feel like okay I don't want to do this and then as soon as I actually sit down and be like okay let's just find some zines to include in the free zines for the video as soon as I do that and as soon as I go on my little my little rabbit hole of of zines on Ichito and on uh, Gumroad and on the zine libraries and stuff that like all the places that I usually like to look for free zines as soon as I get in there and actually start finding some zines and reading them it reminds me again and again and again of just how much I love zines and how I am completely overjoyed to spend an entire afternoon searching for zines and looking at zines <laughs> and it just the fact that engaging with the hobby or whatever you'd want to call it reignites my love for it every single time I think that says it all about why I love zines so I guess that's about all I have to say. <laughs> I, um, so I guess I'll just move on to the free zine that I have uh, today. This one is a somewhat unusual zine. It is a web-based zine, so there is no print. Um, and it is, a, it is a collaborative zine that takes submissions of any kind, images, text, um, original and not original, and takes submissions for that every month and then puts them all together into a monthly collaborative web zine that is still very, uh, you know, still wants to keep up this sort of, this uh, style, I guess, of the old style cut and paste zine, but in a web format, which also means that it can include things like GIFs and videos and whatever. It is really cool. It's called unavoidable disaster and that's the name of the zine and the website I'm pretty sure it's just unavoidable disaster.com I'll link it below um, <laughs> the reason that I wanted to include this particular zine is because uh, I had a very um, impactful moment I guess reading this zine a few years ago in one of the 2019 issues I want to say I don't totally remember and I may be just making that up because I don't even remember if it's been out since 2019 but anyway <laughs> I, I just I have a very strong memory and a very strong experience of scrolling through that zine and then finding one particular piece of art which I'm going to highlight here and that is this um, this picture that someone had made, this drawing of the statue of David, Michelangelo's David, with um, 
top surgery scars, like, torn out. And for, for some reason, just seeing that in the context of... <laughs> I just, I, I, I'm trying to put it into words, I'm sorry. <laughs> Obviously, it's going to be very important to me as a trans person to be able to see that. But it was more than just that. It was the fact that this is a drawing of a famous piece of art that someone did a tactile manipulation of by tearing out a portion of the paper to make the scars in the context of this submission to an online zine that was inspired by this cut-and-paste style zine and now done online, it just felt like this huge melding of all of these different things, all of these different styles, and it was one of those moments that I can only describe as like a spiritual oneness with the universe kind of thing, where I see this and I just think like, wow, anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> it has this connection with historical art and and modern experience and modern thought and also like this idea of transness being lost in history and it just summed up so much in this beautiful image that I never would have come across if it weren't for this zine and that was only enhanced by its by being shared with all of these other images like I'm sure that it would have been impactful if I had just come across this on Twitter or something, or if I had come across this even in an art museum, but just something about the fact that it felt like a discovery to find it. It felt like, you know, being at a bookstore and flipping through all these books and then just happening across something that is completely magical that's been buried under a whole bunch of other stuff. It felt like this treasure hunt and this magical thing that I had found that was almost like it was meant for me. Does that sound selfish? <laughs> you know. Anyway, I want so that's why I wanted to to bring up Unavoidable Disaster. And I've sort of been waiting for the right time to bring it up. It's been on my list as one of those free zines that I definitely wanted to include at the list at some point. And I think this is the time because it was just one of those really magical spiritual moments that kind of remind me of why I love zines. Um, so Unavoidable Disaster is still going every month. They are taking submissions of any kind, it's, it's super loose. Like, if you have anything that you want to see in this zine, seriously, just submit it. It, you know, the whole idea of this zine is sort of this collaborative effort, and it's, there's not really much of a screening process as far as I know. Um, so definitely submit it, or definitely read it. You don't even have to download this one. You can just read it in your browser. They have all their past issues, and they have the current issue, and, you know... So definitely just give that a click, and yeah, I'll see you soon. Um, I hesitate to say tomorrow, but you know, I'll see you soon as I continue to catch up with these videos a little bit. I'll probably do another compilation uh, of multiple days together, and um, hope that your July has been going okay. <laughs>